Hey guys, it's Sam. Today we're going to talk about soft contact lenses and specifically we're going to talk about spherical equivalent or the circle of least confusion, which is kind of confusing sounding anyway. But yeah, soft contact lenses. So, so why would we fit soft contact lenses? They're easy to fit um, because, you know, there's not as many base curve options. So a lot of people you could do a medium medium K reading, medium base curve, and it'll actually cover a host of corneas. So they're not as much that you have to specialize on these lenses. And now they're available in so many different parameters. Um, they're comfortable initially. So you know, uh, there's not that adaptation period of time like there would be with gas permeable lenses, right? So they're, they're large diameter, so you don't have the lid interaction with them. So in general, you know, it's something that someone could put on their eyes and, and pretty much they're gonna be fairly comfortable if they're fit well. So with soft contact lenses, we need to know the average horizontal visible iris diameter is about 12 millimeters. Um, and actually 11.8 is the average, 12.0 um, is the most common horizontal visible iris diameter. And what that is, is when you're viewing the anterior of somebody's eye, where the iris is, the colored part, the cornea, that's where the cornea, that lens sits in front of. So we could use that to measure the cornea, uh, the, the width of the cornea. The palpebral fissure, um, which is from, you know, eyelid to eyelid, that is average is about nine and a half millimeters. And that's important because you know, soft contact lenses, the diameter is generally about, you know, 14 millimeters or so. Um, we want that um, larger than the palpebral fissure so you don't have that lid interaction there. But because the horizontal iris, visible iris diameter is about 12 millimeters, soft contact lenses, the average diameter is about 14 millimeters. And that's because we want that one millimeter um, that goes around the circumference that skirts the cornea is the term that's used, right? So the soft contact lenses drape the cornea, but there's this one millimeter skirt that's supposed to go around the entirety of the cornea. So when we think of the radius of 12 millimeters, we get six millimeters. So what's the radius of our typical 14 millimeter contact? You know, 14 millimeter diameter is gonna go as a seven millimeter radius right and that gives us that one millimeter all the way around which is what we want right we don't want these landing on the limbus right we want them to uh, bridge the limbus right they're called a semi-scleral lens because they actually will rest just beyond the limbus typically with contacts you do not want them resting on the limbus uh, because that's a that's a very important site on the eye where um, the cells you don't want the if there's pressure on that site you could have migrating cells it can cause different issues it could you know create neovascularization or or impingement or blanching or all different things so we always always want the lens to rest beyond the limbus um, so soft lenses are thought of as there's an umbrella term called hema lenses which is kind of a misnomer uh, because hema was actually you know the first soft material hydroxy ethyl methacrylate um, but since has been pretty much discontinued but they still use that as an umbrella term for soft contact lenses, right? So we have in the 80s, they came out with, started coming out with toric soft lenses. So this is not that long ago. Um, and then in, it was like 1999 before they started coming out with the uh, uh, silicone hydrogel lenses. So, you know, what is that? You know, 20 or, 20 or so years ago that really coming out with these breathable soft lenses. But I digress because we are talking about spherical equivalent. Spherical equivalent. So what this is, is you are taking half of the cylinder value of the prescription and you are adding it to your sphere power. You are literally just doing the, the average of that cylinder component and, and adding it to your sphere. And it's creating a new prescription. What it's doing is it's saying, okay, we're not, we're not doing so well with the toric component, the cylindrical component on this lens. You have things like rotation that takes place. So with low prescriptions, we're talking less than one diopter um, of cylinder value, you may consider uh, doing the spherical equivalent. And I wanna do some examples which will highlight why that's so, right? So look at this, negative one, negative two, axis 180. 
So again, we could just see, really want to stress that Dover and Diopter were not con going to consider a spherical equivalent, but let's pretend that we were, were considering that. So you have negative one at the 180 axis. Your power at the 90 is actually going to be a negative three. Right, because we know all the cylinder is present 90 degrees away. So there's our contact lens. And we know it has every different power in between. You know, negative one, negative two, negative three. So if we were doing the spherical equivalent for this prescription, you would take half of the cylinder, add it to the sphere. So that would be a negative one and a negative one would be a negative two. So if this lens was sitting appropriately, right, there's our six o'clock marker. If this lens was sitting appropriately with the cylindrical component, they would actually be viewing along the 90, they would be viewing negative three. But if we did the spherical equivalent with this prescription, we would be giving this person, I know it's getting kind of ugly up here, negative two everywhere. So they'd be looking through a negative two when they really needed a negative three along the 90, and they really needed a negative one along the 180 horizon. So we could see where that would be an extreme, you know, under correction or over correction. It's just not worth the compromise, right? Spherical equivalent is always some form of a compromise. So why would you compromise? Why would you, even with a lighter prescription, why would you do spherical equivalent? Some of the commonly cited reasons are going to be the cost of toric lenses. Right? It's just not worth paying that much more for cylindrical lenses if the prescription only has a little bit of that astigmatism component. Um, sometimes people want colored lenses that aren't available in their toric prescription. Um, sometimes the visual quality just is, isn't remarkable, the difference in it, or the lens is rotating and it's just not, it's actually worse with the toric component. So there's all different reasons you may consider this, but you want to consider it with something more like this prescription. Negative three, negative a half, axis 180. As you're taking your NCLE exam, this is the type of prescription you'll see for spherical equivalent. They're not gonna like put it up to that negative one or, or even a negative 75 where you have to you know, outweigh, should I overcorrect this person or undercorrect them? You're gonna see something like this. So um, take rest and solace in knowing that this is a, a good example. So if we're doing spherical equivalent for this, our spherical equivalent is, again, you take half the cylinder power, add it to your sphere power. So that would be a negative a quarter plus a negative three. So your spherical equivalent is negative three and a quarter. Again, let's put this on the optical cross just so we can visualize it, help it, you know, to come together for a learning point. So negative three at 180, you would have had a negative 350 at 90. So this lens, the power is going to shift between the three and three and a half diopters, um, you know, because you'll have your three and a quarter, we'll split that. So there's not that much of a difference. And when you start to uh, bring in the point that the lens is going to rotate some when you blink, and it's, you know, if it decenters, you're going to have fluxes in vision, then you're really getting a very similar quality visual experience with your spherical lens, plus the lens is more comfortable because with toric lenses, you have to have a prism ballast, which is a like a one and a half diopter base down prism um, at the inferior bottom portion of the lens, or you have a, a peri ballast, which is same thing as a prism ballast, but it um, uses a, a minus uh, central portion and it, it reduces where that the prism can kind of interfere in the, in the optical zone of the lens. Or you could even do a dynamic stabilization where in the vertical uh, meridian, they thin out the lens to get it to stop rotating. Again, you know, I kind of uh, digress there, but to bring up to the point that those lenses are not as comfortable because they have generally some added thickness to one portion for stabilization methods. And the curves are slightly different with the toricity of the lens. So if it's a light prescription like this, that's when it would warrant potentially doing a spherical equivalent. Right, so in your soft contact lens fitting sets, you, not, you don't see the half a diopter of correction. That's because they know the lens is gonna rotate a little bit, or when you blink, it's gonna um, move just a little bit too, where it's not really worth putting that correction in there. You'll see it at the 0.75 uh, 
uh, point, the negative 0.75 for your cylinder. And that's because that's where it's really worth starting to consider adding the cylindrical component to the prescription. Hope this video was helpful. If it has, please go ahead and um, subscribe to the channel, like it, share it, all that good stuff. And uh, I appreciate you watching and just uh, put comments down or any questions you may have. I love the suggestions for new videos. They're helpful actually when I'm trying to think of what to speak about. I just, sometimes I just like to ramble regardless. But um, anyway, thank you for